Guess whose parents are here? Yes. This is film music. I have two
Good morning. It is so good to have you all here this morning, those who are here in person and those who are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, if you are watching us, uh, worshiping with us on Facebook, uh, we do invite you to let us know who you are. Uh, we would like to uh, touch base with you um, moving forward. A couple uh, announcements, uh, reminders of things going on here. Uh, next Sunday, the 15th, is our annual church picnic. And um, that will, uh, dinner will be served at 5.30, but you can get there before that. It's at Rolling Ridge Park, um, which is over across, in Harbor Creek, uh, off of the, uh, Nagel Road. Um, we have a sign-up sheet out front. We have, so far, 49 people signed up to join us. If you have not decided whether you want to go or not, please try to decide that before you leave today and sign up. Uh, it's a great time to socialize and interact with each other. Uh, and since it's outside, it's a lot safer <laughs> this year. Now, we didn't have our picnic last year because of COVID, and it's nice to be able to have it again. Um, so uh, we do encourage you to do that. Also out in the narthex, you will find a baby bottle tree, and that is listing items to be purchased for uh, premature babies through age two that uh, are part of the foster care program. And uh, those, that tree will be available through next Sunday. And the, uh, the gifts with the tags attached need to be returned uh, by August 22nd. If you have any questions about that, contact Joyce Hauser. Okay. And I think that's all I've got for us today. Message uh, announcements wise, our choir is here to help our, ourselves to prepare for worship by offering a prelude choir. Oh. 
Thank you, choir. Please stand. We are caught up in the trials and tribulations of our everyday lives. Bad news blasts us from every direction. Help us to believe in your healing love, O Lord. Empower us to reach out to each other and to our community. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that we may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Amen. Reading from the first letter to the Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. 
Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever said, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, place your words upon my lips and in my heart that I may proclaim your truth. What is God up to? What is God doing in our church, in our neighborhood, in the lives of people within the fold of the congregation, and in the lives of those beyond it? What is God doing in this place? We probably have not asked ourselves that question at Messiah in a very long time. But it's important for a congregation to ask this question of itself on a fairly regular basis. Because we are on a mission. That mission is to accomplish what God is calling us to be and to do through the Holy Spirit. And we have a better chance of figuring that out by looking at that question, what is God doing in this place, than we do without that question. As we look at chapter 12 of Paul's first letter to the Corinthian Christians, we learn that part of the answer to this question is to figure out what spiritual gifts we have and how God is calling us to use them. Paul begins chapter 12 by saying, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. By all accounts, the Corinthians had a full measure of the Spirit's power. Prophecy, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of tongues and knowledge. The Corinthians had them all and more. Yet they also had conflict. They had immorality and thoughtless disregard for one another. How could they know something was a gift of the Spirit and not merely self-indulgence? Paul offers three criteria for making such judgments. First, through God's spirit, God is bearing witness to Jesus as Lord. No one speaking by the spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. We heard that in verse 3 of today's reading. In his book, Bad Religion, How We Became a Nation of Heretics, Ross Dutat is sharply critical of various Christian heresies popular in America today. From the prosperity gospel 
of people like Joel Osteen to preoccupation with the God within from Oprah Winfrey and others to Glenn Beck's understanding of God as chiefly concerned to spread democracy through the world by means of American military might and foreign policy. One of the things all of these voices have in common is silence about that which Paul told the Corinthians was all he decided to know among them. Jesus Christ and him crucified. According to the Apostle Paul, one way to know whether a movement is led by the Spirit of God is to listen for its claims about Jesus Christ. The Spirit makes Jesus known to us in the cross, in the supper, and in the resurrection. By the Spirit, the church testifies that Jesus, not money, not security, not self-esteem, not paranoia, power, or anything else, is Lord. Gifts from God's Spirit proclaim Jesus as Lord. They also serve the common good. And this is the criteria that I think most Christians have a problem with. It's the one that we tend to overlook. Paul's second criterion for discerning the work of the Holy Spirit points to the Spirit's interest in the common life of those it draws together. Just as the Spirit is all about talking up Jesus as Lord, so the Spirit is all about building up the group rather than enriching the individuals. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We heard that in verse 7 today. Individuals receive gifts from the Spirit, yet each gift is for the body as a whole. This implies that if a gift cannot be shared, and shared for the common good or the good of others, it is not from the Spirit. It also implies that any attempt to rank individuals according to to their possession of better gifts would be at odds with each gift's common purpose for the good of all. One gift is not better than another gift. The third clue or criterion that Paul offers to us as we try to answer what God is up to in a particular place is a sort of negative criterion. Whatever God's Spirit is doing, it will probably not be characterized by tidiness. And this one is one of my favorites. I hold it near and dear to my heart. When we are looking for the Spirit's gifts, Look for a bit of a mess. This means, among other things, that the fact that we did not think of something, whether we are a longtime member, or the pastor, or a member of church council, or the Apostle Paul, is not enough to say it is a bad idea. True, Paul urges that Corinthians do everything decently and in order. But this requirement does not preclude a varied collection of activities. The Corinthian Christians were the original enthusiasts, giving every evidence of having swallowed the Holy Spirit, feathers and all. Many of them seemed enthralled 
by the more dramatic external manifestations of the Holy Spirit's work, such as tongues or prophecy or healing. Sadly, at the same time, they ignored the quieter work of the Spirit to draw them into a community that respects all of its members. They could not, for instance, share the Lord's Supper together equitably. When Paul tries to redirect the Corinthian Christians' attraction for spiritual gifts, it is not because he likes tradition more than innovation or because he is trying to erase difference. Paul redirects the Corinthian Christians to the still more excellent way of faith, hope, and love. Because that way will bring them back to valuing one another more than their own knowledge, their own wisdom, their own prophecy, miracles, tongues, and all the rest. The person sitting beside you at worship today or sitting at home beside you, or joining you on a ministry team, or participating with you in a ministry. That brother or sister in Christ matters more than all the spiritual gifts in the congregation combined. Paul's goal is not a tidy community life, but a loving one. How do we know the work of the Holy Spirit among us? The Spirit proclaims Jesus as Lord, offers its gifts to the church for the common good, and activates love for one another. These criteria give us a place to start as we continue to look for what God is up to in our own church in our own neighborhoods today. And the people of God said,
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
this world. You, you have, have been, been so, so generous, generous to us every day. We pray that we will show our generosity in giving back to you what is already yours. Amen. Let us confess our failures and our faithlessness, trusting in God's promise to make us new. God of all the world, we break your heart by the respectable lives we lead. Blessed by you with every gift, we practice thrift towards others. Seeking to be good and proper Christians, we overlook you in the company of the poor, the oppressed, those without a voice. We choose to spread gossip about our friends and neighbors when we could speak gently of them. Forgive us for the pain we cause you and other people. Help us to make a clean break with those habits which keep us from wholeness. Open us to the movement of your spirit within us. Feed us with the bread of life so we might have the love and passion to feed the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new, the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all.
us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diversity forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, those exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, and for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray for those among us who prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. We confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those afflicted by racism in our community and worldwide. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of healing, we pray for those who are suffering, who are sick, especially Bishop Michael Alonzo, those on our prayer list and those we now name in your presence. Surround them with your unwavering presence. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us toward you, especially Gerald Anderson, Betty Huff, Dorothy Taff, Rose Simons, Barbara Soltis, and Alice Losey. May we be reunited with one another in the last days. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace in the world and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We also pray and keep in, in thought those who have been impacted by the wildfires throughout the United States especially those families who have lost loved ones to the fires or their entire communities. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon us now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thanks be to God. And I do hope you all have a great and blessed week. Thanks, Carol.